Hello. Today we're fishing on the Grand Union Canal at Slapton, where I'll be fishing two methods, the three metre pole and the running line. The weather's going to be hot today, um, and maybe quite a bit of boat traffic. It may affect the fishing a little bit, but let's see what we can catch. First of all, I shall set up the three metre pole. The pole I'm using is telescopic and it's got a splice tip built into the top which absorbs my strike when I'm fishing a light line. It's stiff through the middle, allowing not too much play when swinging fish in. The attachment on the end is a stomp foe fitting. It's got a small hook which the loop goes over and the sleeve covers the hook so as the loop cannot come out. It's quite simple. It's a hook with a sleeve. The rig I'm going to use on the three meters today is the four number 10 styles. Normally, I'd perhaps use the four number 12 styles, but with the conditions where there's not much wind and it's pretty calm, a lighter flow would be a better presentation. And with it hot, the fish will be a little bit higher up in the water. It'd be a, a better bet than the four number 12s, which is a lot heavier rig. The attachment I use for putting my rig on my winder is a little devil hook. It's just a little bit of elastic with an anchor on one end and a little loop on the other. It just attaches to the loop of my rig and when I wind it at the end of the day on my winder or when I'm taking it off, it just puts it away neater in the box to save having loops of line all flapping everywhere in your box. Right, let's just attach this now to the end of my pole that I've just showed you on the Stompfo fitting. The loop goes in and the sleeve so as the loop cannot come out. The main line on this rig is 008, which is about a pound breaking strain. The hook length is a three quarter pound bottom to a 24 bar bliss. The float, a four number 12 style float, it's a pear drop shape, which gives stability under the water when it's weighted down to just the tip of the bristle. On the hook length, I have two number seven styles, one spaced three inches from the hook, and then one spaced three inches from that one. They're the only two shots I have on the hook length. Then the bulk of the shot is just above the hook length on the main line. This 
skiffs, still a light drop in the water. And the last two number seven styles really fall natural, as if the bait's just falling in with nothing attached to it. There's the three metre setup that I will use today. The heavier rig that I would have used if conditions had been a little bit a little rougher than what they are today. If I just unravel this, I'll show you the setup. It's quite simple, it's it's on the same lines as the lighter one that I've just set up, but whereas this one is a four number 12 style float, a bigger body, same shape, a bigger body. Still, 24 barbless hook but this time because I'd be using this rig and conditions would be slightly rougher the fish would be down more towards the bottom so I've got more styles on the three-quarter pound hook length I've got four number seven styles there I normally put between three and four and space them evenly from three to four inches above the hook, about two, two and a half inches apart. And then once again, the bulk of the styles just on the main line above the hook length. This allows to get through the water quite faster than the other rig, but still a nice light drop into the last foot, foot and a half of water. And that's rig I'd use if conditions were slightly rougher. Incidentally, on these small pole floats that I use, I always paint the bristle because with a lot of these shop brought pole floats, the bristle is so fine that you can't weight it to your requirements. You can weight the bristle to there, another shot, it sinks it. With painting it, it gives it just an extra coat, makes it just slightly thicker, and you can shot that to how you want it. Let's just put this rig away. And I'll go on to show you the rod and line setup. The rod I use is an 11 foot rod. It's got a splice tip, which once again, like the three meter pole, allows a forgiveness when striking. I'll just show you that tip. It's a very soft top and it blends nicely into the blank. There's no flat spot in the rod. When setting the rod up, I always take time to line up the rings so they're all in a line. I've seen so many anglers with the rings, one joint just tipped that way and it must hinder when casting or when playing a fish. If they're nice and straight in a line, you've got the through action, the true action of the blank when playing a fish. The reel I use is an open-faced reel. It's nice and light. I have used close-faced reels, but I think they hinder the casting. 
as you can see there with the spool, the line comes off so freely. And when, when the line's put on correctly, it's a match spool on there and it does take 100 yards of line. And the, as you can see, the line comes off so freely. But when casting little light floats, which I'll be using today, it allows you to fish as light as possible and less disturbance when the float goes into the water. Another point is always position the reel as far up the butt of the rod as you can, as tight to the end as you can, <clears throat> because that's when you achieve the maximum balance on your rod. Because I've seen a lot of anglers with the reel down here. I've got a short butt on this rod because I've cut it to my length of my arm, because I find there's no need to have it no longer. Only on feeder rods when you're really punching a, a feeder out far. But I don't see no point in having a reel there because the balance of the rod's wrong. So always make a point of putting your reel as far up the butt as you can. And you get the true balance of your rod. The true balance of the rod should be there, but it's not. I think it's about there. You'll find just about there. But with putting the reel back here, the balance is all out of proportion. Let's just thread the rod up. It always pays to take time when threading your rod up through the rings. It's so easy to put the line through the leg of the ring and not the eye. And uh, especially when match fishing, you come to cast your float and it doesn't cast right, you think, what's up with a reel? And sometimes when you check your rod rings, you haven't threaded your rod up right. And it can be a pain setting up again. So always take time just to thread up your rings. And make sure that you've gone through the eye of all the rings. It's only a two minute job. Just passing it back, just checking. There. The attachment I use is just a loop to loop with the hook length. Just a simple loop. I do always do a double loop, loop just to make sure that if there's any extra tension put on the line around that point where it can slip through on the knots, they hold just that bit better. There, just cut that off there neat with the scissors, a little bit there. The hook length I shall be using on the float rod is three quarter pound bottom again, but to a 22 barbless hook. The reason being a 22 as opposed to a 24, hopefully I'll be getting far more bites on the float rod over, because there's less disturbance over there. And I can afford to use a bigger hook and it's got better holding power than a smaller hook. Just a small hook length of about 18 inches, the same as the pole. You can see there where I wound the hook off. It's not a normal hook packet, it's little plastic coils that I just wind the hooks round. You've got little slits in the top here where you put the end piece of line wherever it reaches. You can see the hooks round there, all wrapped on. And you've got a little bar in there, and when you whip your first hook, you put the hook round the bar and wind it round, and wherever the loop finishes, just tuck it in the little slit. And then when you whip your next hook, you put the hook through the loop and carry on winding. So as if I unhook that and completely wound, I could wind all the hooks off in one go. It's quite simple and much neater. You could put probably a hundred hooks on there with three quarter pound bottom, if not more, as opposed to a hook packet 
which takes up a lot more room. Much neater. Let's attach this now to my float rod. Hook through the loop and then pass the hook back through its own loop, pull up carefully, just wet it slightly just to allow it to not smoother. There it is. A 1.5 main line on the reel through to a three quarter pound bottom. Nice neat two little loops down to the 22 hook. Now to choose the float. The float I shall use will probably take about between two and three number one. The float I use is a homemade float. Made out of balsa. The attachment is a little homemade attachment. What it is, it's a swivel cut in half with a piece of silicon. And the swivel, the half swivel, is pushed into the silicon and then allowing enough silicon to fit on the end of the float. When I make the bolts of float, I just round a little piece on the end, just enough so as the silicon can fit. The same with the peacock wagglers as well, just so as it's a quick attachment. You can be fishing a match and take off any float and put on any float on. Every float in my box will fit to that attachment. It pays on just to wet the bottom of the bolster. It just slips on just a little bit easier. Okay, now we shall shot the float up. Just pass it onto the float rod there. I use the same sort of principle on the hook length as my pole rigs with styles as opposed to shot. The reason being a number seven style which I can quite comfortably put on the line and space out is the equivalent of about a number 14 or 15 dust shot and I've got good eyesight and I struggle to put on that size shot on the line and I find with the styles it's a much better presentation and if it works on the short three metre pole, then surely why shouldn't it work on the float rod? Which I feel it does. Okay. I'm putting, on, I'm putting on one number eight style. Just let some line out, you can see that better then. About three and a half, four inches from the hook. And then I space three number nine styles about two and a half inches apart from that first number, set, uh, number eight style. Just put those on now. Two on. That 
Mark's 3 on. If you can see that, that is a number 8 style, about 3.5 inches from the hook, and about 3, three inches spaced evenly, 3 number 9 styles. float that takes two to three number one, the bulk shot is put round the float which allows for nice accurate casting because the bulk of the shot is round the float and then these styles when it hits the water a real nice presented slow fall as if the bait had nothing attached to it. All down to presentation. Just put two number two number one shots around there. Bit more line out. Incidentally, with these safe shot now, where there's been a lead band. I used to use silicon on the line with the lead, lead free shot pinched round it, but now I find it's much quicker. If you just pinch it on gently, it doesn't mark the line. And with, with just pinching it on as well, at the end of the day, because it's quite expensive, this lead free shot, just with your thumb now, you can just slightly open up the shot and take it off the line and retain it. Just show you that setup again. A number eight style, and we've got three number nine styles spaced about three inches apart, and then leading up to the float, locked with two number one round the float, just pinched on, nice and gently. ready now. Before we start fishing I'd just like to go through what baits I'm going to use and how I mix my ground bait up. Right, these are the baits I'll be using today. All I've got is about two pint of squats in there that I'll be using for the hook and for feed. And these are the ground baits that I'll be mixing and using today. A Marcel van der Nine ground baits. It's the Special and the Super Cup. And in the water that I'll be mixing it up with, I've put some vanilla flavouring, which I find very good for the roach on canals. Right. It's quite simple, a 50-50 mix. Half a bag of Super Cup to half a bag of Special all in one container and just give them a little mix before adding the water just to ensure that they're all mixed round 50-50 there we go now I shall add the water with the vanilla flavouring mixed in a little bit of the time because the consistency that I'll be using is not too wet. I like to mix it up as dry as possible but allowing it to still hold together when I throw it to the far side of the canal. a little bit more. I think that'll be about 
about right. Many anglers, when they knock the ground bait, they just put the ground bait in a bowl, throw the water in. Sometimes it's too dry, sometimes it's too wet. If you just take your time, always take your time, whatever you're doing in fishing, and it always pays in the end. Now to a lot of anglers, I'd look at that mix there, and I think, mm, that's lovely, that's, it holds okay. It can form a reasonable ball with one squeeze of the hand. But there's still lumps in that. And when I chuck a ball of that in as it is now, it forms a cloud, but you still get big lumps falling away, which fills the fish up too quick. With this ground bait, you just want to form a cloud as an attractor. So what I do, once I've mixed it, and I think that's, that's suitable now, I get another bowl, and I get what we call a pinky riddle, just a metal riddle, made for riddling pinkies, which is a small maggot. I put the ground bait into the riddle, just sieve it. See all those lumps? They would have been in the feed that I'd have chucked in for the fish. You can break them down and make them go through the sieve. And we've left, left with a few then, just tap them out. Same procedure again, and go through the whole bowl that you've made, just sieving it. Breaking the lumps, making them fall through the riddle. And just left with a few, just tap them out. As you can see already how finer to feel. You can feel all the lumps in the unsieved ground bait. But when I pick up some of this, it's so fine. It's lovely. It's perfect mix, that is. Let's just riddle a bit more. Break them lumps up. Less waste. Normally in a fishing session, a bag of special and a bag of super cut is more than enough. Sometimes it's too much. So if you just knock up what you require for the given period of the time you'll be fishing, you'll have no waste. Look at that, that's lovely. So fine, just holds together. Just enough for me to throw it to the far side of the canal and to feed under my feet. It's lovely. Right, now we've gone through the ground bait and the bait that I'm using, which are the squats. Some people put the squats with the ground bait, but I find with a fine mix like this, if you put these squats with the ground bait, sometimes it doesn't hold together. You pinch it and the squats are wiggling, and they form a space and it just breaks it open and when you throw it, it doesn't reach the far side. So I always don't put no squats in the ground bait, only loose feed with the catapult. Right, now we've gone through the ground bait and bait, I think do a bit of fishing. Right, here we are then, we're all ready to do a bit of fishing. I'll just position my box, just adjust my legs so I'm nice and comfortable. My keat net's at hand, my bait tray to the side of me is at hand with my ground bait and squats. I've got my landing net set up, that's at hand. I've got a bottle of washing up liquid out here because the wind's got up a little bit and when I start to fish the float rod I just might have to sink my line. Right, I'm going to start off by plumbing up on the three metre line. To plumb the depth, I use a swan shot with a piece of silicon. 
clipped in to the swan shot and I just put the hook through the silicon and being barbless it just hooks in and hooks out. It's quite simple, just heavy enough to find the depth and not too heavy to make a big splash like the plummets do. Nice and simple. Let's see what the depth's like. I've set it at about three and a half foot. It looks about right. Let's just try that again. The float's weighted just to the bristle. And I like to get it so as with that piece of silicon, when the hook goes through the silicon, the swan shot's rested on the bottom and the hook is about not quite half an inch off the bottom. And then if I can get the bristle of the float registering in the water, just at water level, it means that when the float weights up, I'm at the correct depth at what I like to fish, which is about half an inch off the bottom. Let's just try that to the right to see if the depth changes at all. No, that looks the same. Just try it to my left. Yeah, that looks about right. Let's just try it once more in front of me. Yeah, that's just right. It's about three and a half feet, that is. That's just past the near side shelf, but I always fish. three metres to hand, whether there's a shelf or not, because I think that's a comfortable distance from bankside disturbance where the fish like to hang around. Right, now I'm going to plumb up on the, three, on the float rod. Using the same principle again, swan shot clipped to a piece of silicon with the hook in the silicon. So it lands much neater than a plummet. Let's just try that once more. That seemed to be set just right. Just try that once more. I'm plumbing up about a metre and a half off the far bank just down the shelf where I hope to catch. Just come down about two inches, that should put me about half inch off the bottom. It must have shot there, let's just put another shot back on. Membrane, just to pinch that shot on just carefully. So with these lead free shots, they're very hard. They can damage the line. Just pinch it on just so as it just holds. Still just a little bit too deep. Just come down about another, about another, about another two and a half, three inches will come down. Just try it that. Just See what that's like. Once more. That's probably. 
probably just a bit too much. It's come up about an inch. Just moving them shots very carefully so it's not to damage the line. Always start fishing on three metres. Always. And I fish for half an hour on three metres, whether I'm catching or not. And at the same time, I will be loose feeding and putting a little bit of ground bait on the rod and reel line. And hopefully, after half an hour, the fish have been feeding quite freely over there and they've got enough confidence to stay there, as opposed to going straight over there and disturbing the few that are there. And you've got far more chance of building up a better shoal of fish over there with feeding for half an hour, or it may be more, depending on catching on the inside. And you've always got another line to fall on if the inside fails. So start off. Just going to fast loose feed some squats on the far bank. Probably about 20 to 30 squats in there. Let's just fire them over there. Lovely. Also, I've put a small ball of ground bait in, probably just a, a good handful, just squeezed. That's smashing, that is. At the same time, I'm going to put a small ball on my inside where I'm going to fish. A few squats as well, not as many as I've fired on the far bank, probably about 15, 15 to 20. All right, let's get fishing. So that's a nice fat squat. Just hook the squat carefully on the bottom. Try not to burst the squat. That way it wiggles far more. Looks lovely that does, I could eat that myself. <laughs> okay. Throw that in there, just sink me line between the tip of the pole and the float by immersing the tip of the pole about three inches and just giving a sharp pull with the tip underwater and it tends to sink the line between the pole tip and the float. I shan't feed, I like to feed every cast, but I shan't feed because the water's moving, meaning there's a boat coming through, and it tends to move the fish off. So I shan't feed till the water stops moving, but I'll still run the squat through on the pole. The only time I would feed if it's flowing is perhaps a small ball of ground bait because it tends to go straight down. Just slowing a little bit. I'm just going to put a little small wall of ground baiting on the inside again. And I'll put one over, one over the far side as well. It's lovely. Oh, there's a bite there. That's the third put in. Squat wasn't touched. Just put another fresh squat on. Same again, just hook it gently through the bottom, not to burst it. Nice and wiggly, that looks lovely, that does. Didn't think there was a hook in it. Gently, overhead cast, pole tip in the water, pull back, little flick. It's 
the line's nicely under the water now. The, the wind can blow and it won't disturb the float. It'll keep its position. A few squats on the inside. A few over. Every car. Oh, we're in. Same again, line sun. Just put a little bit of ground bait in this time. On the near side. Oh, what we should catch though is roach by loose feeding squat and a little ball of ground bait every other cast. We should get the roach interested. And that's what we want to catch the roach because you can build up a weight quicker on roach than gadging. There's a bite there. By feeding every cast few squats on the near side and far side, you form a constant trickle of bait going in and all the time you're drawing fish and they're fighting for them squats. It's only a small bait, they're searching for them. And it starts off slow and then you start to get bites and if there's a lot of fish there you'll keep getting lots of bites and hopefully lots of fish. A fish then. <laughs> nice little perch. A few more squats again. A few more on the far bank. Come off that one, that was a roach. A three, four ounce fish. Took it as soon as it went in. Squats untouched. Little ball of ground bait this cast. Feeding that far bank swim and the near side. Always keep feeding. Once the bulk shot's down, it registers on the float, and the last two little stars, as I showed you before, the two number seven stars, just bring that bristle down. If the bristle doesn't come down after about seven seconds of that float settling, something stopped that. Hopefully a fish. Without then two little stoles down and you had the bulk of the shot, you, you wouldn't see the bite, it wouldn't register. So it's best to have them telltale shots. There we go, we're in. That feels like a perch. Well, oh, little perch. Let's disgorge this fish. There you go. It's just over where I had the last perch there. I expect a bite there. There we go. Another little perch. Especially for speed in a match. If you don't have to change the squat, it's all extra time. A few squats on the far side again, a few under my feet. Missed that one. Squat's still okay. Just put a 
little bit of ground baiting this time. On the near side. I think it pays to put a ball straight behind the boat. As soon as it's come through, it just makes the fish think, well, I think in my mind that if the bottom's stirred up and you don't put nothing out there, and the fish don't like it, and if you've got fish out there, it tends to make a move on. But if you suddenly put a ball of ground bait in straight after the boat's come through, the fish think, oh, that stirred something up nice, and they tend to stay there. And you can hold the fish longer then and build up a better weight. Well, I've caught a few on this three metre line. I think it's about time I changed and, and had a look over on the float rod over there on the far bank. Just have this one last cast. We've caught a few perch and a few roach, a couple of gadging. Uh, a little gadging. Unhook him. Put him in there. Let's have a look on the float rod. Perhaps not. I'll just stay another five minutes on the short pole. I just notice another boat's coming through. and I always like to go over on the float rod when it's settled, after the boat has been through. So I'll just give another five minutes short. Using the same principle again, just a small ball of ground bait. Over the other side, because that boat's just come through. Little ball on the inside. Again, another pelts will a loose feed. That wind's getting a bit bad now. Still, that's lovely out out there. Winter time, the boats tend to help you more. If you're sitting there in the winter time and when the water tends to be a bit clear and you do happen to get a boat come through, it can liven up your swim. But nine times out of ten, though, they, they are a nuisance, especially when you've got fish feeding. But give it two or three minutes after the boat's come through and you start to catch again. One more cast. Incidentally, the colour of the water as well, it's like a... Well, it looks like it's polluted, really, when you look at the canal water, and yet... The fish <laughs> so healthy, as if, you know, there's nothing wrong with the canal. Well, I don't think there is nothing wrong with the canal. It's just a funny colour. And people look at it and think, oh, fish can't survive in, yet, in that, but it doesn't affect them at all. One more, one more. Let's put that in there. A bit more feed on the other side. A little bit on the inside. Still getting bites down there. Still a few fish down there. And a little lift there. We're going to have a little perch. Right, Let's have a look on the float rod now. Right, we've got the depth as we plumbed up before. I know that's the right depth out there where I'm fishing, about a metre and a half off the far bank. I may have to put some fairy liquid on the line if that wind is too bad, if I can't get the line to sink well enough without it. But I'll try it first without it. Leave the line. Seems OK. Once again, another pouch will feed. 
at the same time I've stopped fishing under my feet, I'm still going to feed. Like I wasn't fishing on the far side, but I was feeding. Let's just see what we get. Oh, the bite there first put in. I expected the bite first put in because I've been feeding over there, but that's good signs, that is, that there's a few fish there. Let's try it again. No, not disturbing the fishing. We've just had three boats come through. And a lot of ducks. And we're still catching fish. What? Hmm. Yep. Feels a bit better this one. Now a nice little roach. Really and truly, if I was fishing the caster, the roach would probably wouldn't be as big as this. It's a good sized fish. And a little bait of the just a little bait of squat it took. Really nice little roach. Easily disgorged with a little look. Let's just try that. Cast and feed. All the time. Cast and feed. If you stop feeding, the fish will go away. There you go, there's a little bite there. We got it. Feels like a roach. Oh, it's a nice little roach that is. I net that one. Nice size, that is. nice weight builders they are. That size of fish. He swallowed that, we'll have to disgorge that. Nice. It's lovely that is. Nice size fish. People seem to think that if a fish swallows the hook, you make the fish bleed and it's unfair to the fish, but I think if you've got a, a plastic disgorger, they're the best ones. Scores the fish lovely and there's no harm to them whatsoever. Once again, cast and feed. Always remember, cast and feed. Look at that little duck. It hasn't been too bad. I thought the wind might get a bit stronger, but it hasn't. It's dropped slightly, if anything. If the wind had kept up, and it was trouble presenting the flow out there, I think I'd have fished the long pole. It's a very effective method on the squat. A long pole and a short line fishing the squat. But there's no need as the wind, wind hasn't got up. And you fish it on the same principle as the three metre set up. A little light 4 by 10 float. Two number seven styles on the hook length and the bolt just above on the main line. Set just off bottom. And just presented on about 11, 12 metres on the line you're fishing with the float rod. It's a very effective method. Right, let's have a look what we've got in the net then.
So that ain't bad for a few hours fishing. A few nice roach in there. A few perch, a couple of gadging. Nice little session. All that remains now is to return them and to pack away the tackle. And also, just incidentally, I always bring a plastic bag with me. And when I pack away and break down my line and hooks, I always put them in a plastic bag and clear all my rubbish and take it home and put it in the dustbin. There we have it, the swim left all nice and tidy, free of line and rubbish, all ready for the next person. See you next time.